Good morning. Happy Monday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. The sun is up. It is a BEA beautiful day. It is Monday. Um, I'm talking with Eric Cressy tonight. This is exciting. I haven't talked to Eric in a long time, at least not directly. We've emailed and such. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I got a pretty good, good question that came through uh, askbillharman at gmail.com and then I had literally the exact same question come through on IFSU over the weekend so I thought I got to answer this one because obviously people have a curiosity um, and it's also one of my favorite topics to talk about because it makes people really uncomfortable because it kind of bucks the status quo a little bit but I think that, that once I get through with the explanation you'll understand why I have an opinion of such and then hopefully it will be useful for you as far as your thought process and make your life just a little bit simpler. Um, so the question that came through Ask Bill Hartman uh, at Gmail is from Alex and Alex says I watched your upload of the 6 a.m. Uh, coaches conference call uh, from this morning and it was the first time I personally heard you discuss in depth the concept of there's no sagittal plane with regards to the example uh, we were talking about calcaneus and talus and, and tibial relationships and how they cancel out rotations to produce this this forward apparently imaginary sagittal motion um, i'm sure as uh, i'm unsure as to whether you went into more depth with the call itself but i'd be incredibly interested in whether you could address this fully in a q a aha today and how it applies to perceived motion in both the sagittal and the frontal planes um, alex Thank you for the question. Thank you for this opportunity to, to explain this. Um, typically, the way I would do this would be to whiteboard it. Um, so I don't have the whiteboard in the home office as, as I do today. Um, so I'm going to use a visual aid. I made this just for you. Um, not very skilled in, the, in that manner, but it'll work. Um, I also brought in a skeleton to give you a, a nice visual representation. Um, first thing I want to talk about is, is a little bit of geometry. So the Cartesian plane concept of the X, Y, and Z axis still applies. Um, we, we visually, um, we perceive this three-dimensional, actually four-dimensional, I like, I like to throw space time in there, um, but this three-dimensional world of the X, Y, and Z axis. And so, so that's what we see. And so when we ta started talking about anatomy, they decided that, okay, we move in three planes, therefore there must be three planes. And I would offer that visually we see the representation in space of this three planes, but we don't actually produce movement in three planes. What we do is we cancel out rotations to create direction. And so let's talk about that. So if we look at things from a, from a geometric standpoint, we have this point in space. And if I put enough points together, I can make a line. And if I have enough lines together, I can make a plane. And if I put enough planes together, I can make a shape. And so this shape that we're going to worry about is this cylinder. So this is a, a stack of transverse planes, if you will. And so if I put this over the skeleton, this is what our representation looks like. And so I have a three-dimensional representation now of, of the transverse plane. And what you'll notice is that if I draw a line across any point, any two points in this, uh, in this cylinder that crosses through the midline of the cylinder, um, I can make a plane in any direction. And so what you know, I want you to recognize is that if I'm looking down the cylinder, the sagittal plane and the frontal planes actually fall within this transverse plane. And so there's nothing unique or special about the sagittal planes. They're just part of, of this, this three-dimensional transverse plane representation. And so if I go three degrees off the sagittal plane, what do we call that plane? There's, it doesn't get a special name because it, it shouldn't be special. Neither should sagittal nor frontal. Um, it's just a three-dimensional representation to help us have a conversation and nothing more. But it's not how we produce movement. We produce movement in rotations. So let me give you a for instance. So um, when you were developing in your, in your mother's belly and you were a flat plate, um, of, the, of the embryo, and this embryo folds itself over like a burrito, thinking about Thursday chips and salsa already. So your burrito, so that burrito is actually a tube, just like my cylinder, which means that you are all transverse plane. Every joint in your body moves on a helically oriented direction, so, it's all, uh, so they move in helical movements, which are rotational movements. 
all the relative motions that we talk about between body segments are rotations that cancel each other out to produce motion in any direction, not just straight ahead, not just sideways. So again, we can eliminate those as being special planes. There's nothing special about them. Every movement is a cancellation of rotations. Your infrasternal angle is representative of the helical angles of your axial skeleton. Therefore, it tells us what you're good at. How great are you going to be at rotation is going to be determined by your infrasternal angle. When we talk about high force production, like bench presses and squats and deadlifts, and especially these with, with these tremendous weights, what you have are, are human beings that are incredibly capable of canceling out rotations and directing it in one direction, which allows them to lift these, these gigantic heavy weights. So if we want to talk about sagittal and frontal planes, I'm okay with that. I really am. When we talk about directions and points in space and things, but when we talk about how we produce movement, we, we only do things in rotations, and if we can start to see that, our problem solving becomes spectacularly easy relative to trying to think in, in all of these multiple directions that just create confusion. So again, I, I encourage you to, to think this through a little bit. I know it's confusing because I just took away two things that have been ingrained in your brain as far as like how we do move. Um, there's nothing special about those planes. They don't really exist. They are a resultant of the cancellation of rotation. So again, hopefully this is helpful. Alex, if you have any further clarification questions on this one, please ask away at billharmon.gmail.com. If you're angry with me, please send your hate mail directly to me. You can DM me on Instagram or, or throw this up and be angry on YouTube if you like. I'm totally cool with that because I know it's uncomfortable to think this way. But if we're going to solve problems and if we're going to get better, we got to start looking at things differently. So think differently. Have a great Monday. I hope you all have a fabulous week to get it rolling. And I'll see you tomorrow.